Well, hello, friends. Paul Austin, your worship pastor here, and I would like to share with all of you another one of my favorite hymns and the story behind that hymn. Today, we are looking at one of the most powerful and well-known songs in the Christian hymnal, It Is Well With My Soul. The lyrics of this hymn were penned by a man named Horatio Spafford. Horatio was born in 1828 and lived most of his life in the city of Chicago. As a young man, he established a very successful legal practice there. Despite his financial success, he always maintained a strong interest in Christian activities. He enjoyed a close and active relationship with the great evangelist D.L. Moody, as well as several other leading evangelical leaders of that era. He was described by George Stebbins, a noted gospel musician, as a man of unusual intelligence and refinement, deeply spiritual, and a devoted student of the scriptures. When the great Chicago fire consumed the Windy City in 1871, Horatio G. Spafford lost a fortune. He was heavily invested in real estate and all of it was destroyed. Shortly after the fire, his only son, age four, died of scarlet fever. Horatio drowned his grief in work, pouring himself into rebuilding the city and assisting the 100,000 people who had been left homeless. In November of 1873, he decided to take his wife and daughters to Europe. As I mentioned earlier, he was close to D.L. Moody and his song leader, Ira Sankey, and he wanted to visit their revival meetings in England and then enjoy a vacation with his family. When an urgent matter detained Horatio in New York, he decided to send his wife, Anna, and their four daughters, Maggie, Tanetta, Annie, and Bessie, on ahead. As he saw them settle into a cabin aboard the luxurious French liner, the Villa du Havre, an unease filled his mind, and he moved them to a room closer to the bow of the ship. Then he said goodbye, promising to join them soon. During the early hours of November 22, 1873, as the Villa du Havre glided over smooth seas, the passengers were jolted from their bunks. The ship had collided with an iron sailing vessel and water was pouring in. The ship tilted dangerously. Screams, prayers, and oaths merged into a nightmare of unmeasured terror. Passengers clung to post, tumbled through the darkness, and were swept away by powerful currents of icy ocean. Loved ones fell from each other's grasp and disappeared into foaming blackness. The ship sank in 12 minutes. The 226 fatalities included Horatio's daughters, Maggie, Tanetta, Annie, and Bessie. His wife, Anna, was found nearly unconscious, clinging to a piece of the wreckage. Several days later, when the 47 survivors landed in Cardiff, Wales, she cabled her husband, saved, alone. Horatio immediately booked a passage to join his bereaved wife. En route, on a cold December night, the captain called him aside and said, I believe we are now passing over the place where the Villa du Havre went down. Horatio went to his cabin, but found it hard to sleep. He said to himself, it is well, the will of God be done. It was there on the sea, near the area where his four daughters had drowned that Horatio penned this text with words so significantly describing his own personal grief, when sorrows like sea billows roll. It is noteworthy, however, that the text does not dwell on the theme of life's sorrows and trials, but focuses attention in the third verse on the redemptive work of Christ, and in the fourth verse anticipates Christ's glorious second coming. Humanly speaking, it is astounding that one could experience such personal tragedies and sorrows as Horatio Spafford did and still be able to say with such convincing clarity, it is well with my soul. I imagine that when he wrote this song, he had his Bible open to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, which says, For the Lord himself would ascend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain 
will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. When peace like a river Attendeth my way When sorrows like sea billows roll Yeah.